In this Blender tutorial, we're going to be making this procedural clay shader in Blender. Here is the finished result you can see right here, and you can see that we're not going to be using any textures. All we're going to be doing is using Blender's shader nodes to create this. Now here's the scene that I have right here. So I have these two lights right here, and then I have a sphere to display the material, and then I have this camera pointed right at the sphere. Now I am going to be using an HDRI to get a little bit more realistic lighting. You don't have to use this if you don't want to, it's totally optional. But if you want to use the same way that I'm using, I'm using this Pump House 1K HDR on HDRI Haven. I'll leave a link in the video description to that if you want to download it. But this is totally optional. You can definitely just light it however you want and then make the materials within Blender. Now two more things before we get started. The first one is that um, down here on the color management in the render properties, I'm going to be using um, Filmic Blender because this helps to have more accurate lighting. And then on the look here, I'm going to be using high contrast. And then the last thing is that I'm going to be using the Node Wrangler add-on. So if you don't have this enabled, you can go edit and then go to preferences. And then on the add-ons here, you can search for Node Wrangler. So you can just check mark that and then you can just close this. All right, so here we are and let's get started. So I'm just in the camera mode here, I'm in the shading tab and I have the nodes right down here and I'm just gonna call this uh, material clay. And then I'm just gonna go into rendered mode so that we can preview what it's looking like. So first I'm gonna start out by making the color. So I'm gonna press shift A and I'm gonna search for a noise texture. We're gonna add the noise texture right in here. And then we're gonna be using the node wrangler, one of the features with the node wrangler. I'm going to press Control T with the noise texture selected, and that adds this mapping and texture coordinate. Now I'm going to set the object into the mapping because this makes the noise texture be displayed on the sphere a bit better. And then using another feature on the Node Wrangler, I can hold down Control and Shift and click on the noise texture, and now we can preview what it's showing. And that's the main feature of the Node Wrangler. You can just hold Control and Shift and click on any node and preview what it's doing. So there's a few things that I want to do here. The scale here, I want to make this scale a little bit smaller, so maybe around a 4.5, something like that. And then the detail here, I want to change this up to like maybe 10 to give it a lot more detail. The roughness, I want to just turn that up a little bit. And then the distortion right here, I want to change this up to maybe like a 0.3, just so that we have just a little bit of distortion, maybe even a 0.2, something like that. Okay, now you can see that it's only white and black here. We want to change these colors so that they look a lot more like clay. So to do that, I'm going to press Shift A. I'm going to search for a color ramp node, just drop the color ramp node right here. Now this black value, I'm going to move this out and click on it. And I'm just going to make it a light tan, kind of light brown color. And you can really just play around with this and make any color you want. But if you want to use the exact color that I'm using, then you can uh, click on this, click on the hex, and then the hex value that I'm using is A47B57. But you can totally just play around with this and make a color that you like. And then right over here, on the white here, I'm going to bring this out, and then I'm just going to make this one kind of a dark brown color. And again, if you want to use the same hex value that I'm using, I'm going to be using 26241B. So if you want to use the same color that I'm using, it's a slightly green color, kind of a, a dark brown green color. So to add that hex value, just click on it, click over on hex, and then you can just add in that number and it's going to be the exact same color as my one. Okay, and then I want to add another one. So I'm going to click on plus right here, kind of move this over like this move it a little bit closer to the brown one. And then this one, I'm going to make it a bit of a more redder and a little bit darker color because clay usually has a little bit of red in it, just a little bit. Um, and if you want to use the same color that I'm using, I'm going to be using 793922 on the hex value for that one. Now I do want to add one more color, just kind of a basic brown one. So I'll click on this plus, move this kind of into the middle and then change this to just kind of a uh, kind of orangey brown and a little bit more saturated. And again, if you want to use the exact color that I'm using, I'm going to be using 724D1D. Okay, so let's plug this color into the base color and then control shift and click on the principled. Now you can see that it's uh, really shiny and clay isn't really this shiny unless maybe it's wet. But in this case, we're making some dry clay that's kind of uh, cracked a little bit. So on the roughness here, I'm going to change this to maybe like uh, 0.8 and that'll make it uh, a lot less shiny. 
Oh, and I forgot to change the HDRI, so let me just go ahead and do that. So this is the HDRI that I'm going to be using. I like the colors and I think it looks pretty nice. So it's the Pump House uh, HDRI and it's only 1K. That's the uh, resolution size. So again, if you want to download the same one that I'm using, the link will be in the video description. And I think I want to change the distortion on this a little bit higher. So maybe like a 0.4 that just adds a little bit more kind of warping there. All right, and then one more thing that I wanna to do to make the colors look just a little bit better is I wanna add the RGB curves node. So what I'm gonna do is press Shift A and search for RGB curves. Just drop the RGB curves right in there. And then what I'm gonna do is turn this C up a little bit. That'll make it just a little bit brighter. And then this R here, that's for red. I wanna give it just a tad bit more red, but not very much, just a little bit. And then the green, maybe just a tiny bit less and the blue, just a tiny bit less. And I think I might give on the C here, just give a little curve, just give a little curve there. So if I just click on this and press M, you can see that's how it is without and then M and that's how it is with it. So I think it just makes it look a little bit nicer. Now you can see here that it's very smooth and we want to add some bump to this. So what I'm going to do is just grab this color right here, put it into the normal. Sorry, it's really small. Let me just make this a little bit smaller and this a little bit bigger so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna put this color here into the normal, but you can see that there's some shading issues and that's because we need to put it through a bump node to convert it to normal data. So I'm gonna press Shift A, search for a bump node, just drop the bump node in right here. And then this normal here, I'm gonna set this to height and that way it converts it properly. And you can see here, now it's really strong, but this is uh, too strong. So the strength here, I'm gonna change this to maybe like 0.1, maybe 0.15, and now it looks a bit better. Okay, and then let's go ahead and make the cracks. So what I'm gonna do is press Shift A, search for another noise texture, add that in. And then with it selected, I'm gonna press Control T using the Node Wrangler feature. I'm gonna plug the color into the vector on the mapping there. And then if I Control Shift and click on this, I can see what it's doing. Now, right now it's way too big and I wanna make it smaller. So I'm just gonna scale this down a little bit. So I think I'll change the scale to somewhere around 3.5, something like that, but you can definitely change it later. And then let's add a, a color ramp. So I'm gonna press Shift A, search for a color ramp node. We'll just uh, drop this right here in the center. And then I'm going to drag this black value in and drag the white value out. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna give a lot of high contrast to the sphere. And then what we can do with this, once we bring it in, Okay, that looks pretty good. I think I'll make this a little bit smaller though. Maybe around three, something like that, but you can definitely change that to your liking. What I'm gonna do now is press Shift A, search for a math node. We'll just drop this in here. And then right here on the add, I'm gonna change this to warp. And you can see now it's just taking those edges and making it white and then making everything else black. So just make sure they're really close to each other so that it's uh, pretty small. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this through a bump node and tell the black to be uh, just normal and then the white is going to go in. So what I'm going to do is this bump node here, I'm going to press shift D and duplicate it and just drop it right down here. And I think I'll just move these up a little bit. So now what we can do is we can take this warp, plug this into the height. And this is what you do if you want to add multiple bump maps on top of each other. What you do is you have the first one here and you can see that I'm plugging the RGB curves up to the height here. And then the second one, I press shift D, I duplicated this and you put the normal into the normal and then you wanna add another one. So you take the warp and you plug that into the height. And now you can see if I control shift and click on this and then this, turn the strength up a little bit so you can see it. And now you can see it's adding those cracks on top of the previous one. Now you can see that the cracks are coming out, but we want them to be going back in. So to change this, I can click the on the invert node and now you can see they're going in, you can see right there. And then they're a little too strong right now. So I'm gonna change this to maybe like a 0.3 or something like that. And then let's control shift and click on this and you can see it's looking a lot better. Okay, so uh, now I wanna add two more normal maps or two more layers of bump. I wanna add some larger detail and some smaller detail. So what I'm gonna do is uh, click on this noise texture and then hold down shift and click on this one and this one. So I have those three selected and then I'll press shift D to duplicate them. Just bring them over here. And then this bump node, I'm just gonna select this uh, actually not this one because this has the invert. I'll just grab this one, press shift D, move it over, and then just drop it in right there. And then this factor, I'm gonna plug into the height. 
Now, if I control shift and click on this, you can see what it's doing. It's adding in those really big bumps. Now th that's actually too big. I want to make it smaller, like bigger bumps. So this I'm going to change to something around maybe one or actually maybe like two and see what it's doing. And that way just adds a little more variation, give some big bumps. And then you can just change this to something, maybe 0.2, something like that. Okay. And then I want to do it one more time, but this time I want to have some really tiny detail. So I will again, click on this shift D drop it in here. And then I want to select this shift, select this and this and press shift D to duplicate that. And then I can just grab this and pull it up and then I'll plug the factor of this into the height. Now this one, if I can control shift and click on it, I want it to be a uh, really small, lots of detail. So I'll bring this way up. Um, to maybe something like a 25 or something like that and then click on it you can see it's adding in all that detail right there but right now it's way too strong so I'm going to change it to like a 0.1 now I do think that this maybe is a tiny bit too red so I think I'll actually bring this down a little bit and the green I might just turn up a tiny bit to make it a little bit more yellow but it's totally up to you of course you can make it look however you want so now what i'm going to do is render this out i can press uh, f12 to render it or you can also go right up here and click on render and render image and you can see it's finished now um, one more thing that i'm going to do is just go into the compositor and add a denoise node just to denoise the image a bit so i'm going to go over to this compositing tab and i'll click on use nodes and then you should have already a render layers node and a composite node and they should be connected up just like this and then if i control shift and click on the render layers that's going to add a viewer right here so now what I need to do is just add a denoise node in between so that it denoises the image. Also the um, background here, you can press V to zoom that out if it's way too big and Alt V to zoom it in. And if you don't see that backdrop, it's probably because you need to click on this button. Okay, so press Shift A. I'm gonna search for the denoise node, drop it in here and then connect it up to the viewer and compositing. And then to save this image, let's click back on the rendering tab. And then this might be at render result what you need to do is click on the viewer node in this drop down here, and then that way it's going to show the uh, denoised image. So then I can go right here and click on image and just click on save as image and save the image to your computer. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. If you want to download the project files, they are going to be available on my Gumroad and my Patreon, and it'll also help to support me. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.